So early this year, uh, Surat website actually put out a vignette saying that the future polarization package can actually significantly increase the speed of the calculation. However, they are also using a 6-core 12-thread i7 with 96 gigabyte of RAM. So I just want to see if this package is actually useful for common folks like us with normal computers. So this is what I find. So before we look at the result, let's just look at the structure of the analysis. So first of all, the vignette is actually published on January 11, 2022. So it's only been a few months, I believe there's actually more testing to be done, particularly by all of you to actually help them improve the project. So how do they run it is that they run it in CPU mode between one core and four core in two different functions, specifically data scaling and fine markers. So what they have find is about a two to three times improvement in the overall calculation between the fine markers and the scale data. But I believe the problem comes from, first of all, they're running a Ubuntu um, OS. So in Windows, it might be very different on how they handle threading. And they also have a desktop six core 12 thread, 6800K, which is not super fast, but they do have 96 gigabyte of RAM. So most of them would not have the luxury of so many RAM, I would say. Um, and they do not tell us what hard drive and SSD they're running out, but I don't think that's super relevant because they have so much RAM in the first place. <laughs> okay, so I write a simple code in R. Let's actually have a look there and then let's just see the result. Okay, so this is the code. I actually got it from the original vignette. So for the package future is usually installed as part of the dependency of the uh, Surat installation. If not, you can just go to package install and install future right here from crack. So how, do you, how does it work is that you just run, of course, a library command to load it into environment and run a plan, multiprocessors and set the number of workers that you want to have. That's number of threads that when you split it into. So that's not core, that's thread. So you have to be careful on that front. And if you want to check the current plan, you can just do a plan without anything inside and you will print out what are the current uh, workers that is. So after you've done that, you can look in your object from Surat as, in, as usual of how you would do that. Or you can actually build your Surat object from some other means, which you can actually have a look at the fine markers video over here. And how do you enable polarization? It just run the plans before the fine markers and that will actually just enable the, the multi-threading process. So that's pretty easy. So how it works for the benchmark is of course, we need to set up a way to time it. So what, I, what the code is doing here is to create a timing comparison data frame so that we can actually record the start and end of a calculation so that we can actually minus them off to find the time difference between them. Okay, so that is what it is trying to do. So you can see there's a plan sequential here, which is a different thing from the multi-process that we have just now. So when, when it's sequential, means it's actually just a single uh, single track operation, right? One after another, that's what we call sequential. So what you do is you can just um, highlight the whole thing and just press run. So that will actually run the sequential for both scale data as well as the fine markers and actually pipe the data into the timing comparison data frame. So this is of course the sequential data and for, for the multi-threaded data from two cores to four cores, it's basically the same, uh, what you call the same code four times, just changing the plan to multi-process with a worker of two, three, and four, okay? So let's just actually run the two, three, and four, and we should be able to do this. Okay, this will take a while. So maybe I'll just cut this here and we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so after the run has finished, I just changed the FSX to a factor and I can plot the data out in the ggplot. So uh, actually this is a little bit to see because it's very small. So let's just switch to another view uh, to see better. Okay, so this is actually the result coming from my desktop, which is a 3570i5 uh, from like 10 years ago. So as you can see that the, the scale function actually increases in time when the thread actually increases, but the fine markers has uh, again, a huge decrease in time when you go from one CPU to two CPU, but it increases back when you increase the more number of CPU cores. So I also did the same thing with my laptop, which is actually a Pop OS Linux laptop with uh, 8GB RAM. So as you can see that scale data does not 
yeah, does not actually benefit from multi trading, it actually suffer from it. But again, fine markers has very, very similar trend. It's faster with two CPU and it's slower with four CPU cores. So I also did another run with, you know, I was thinking all this thing that I'm running is too old. So I'm running here a 12900K, which is, I believe, a, a 12 core CPU, 24 track or or something, 16 cores if you 24 threads, something like that. And you can see that scale data still suffer from the same problem while fine markers has almost exactly the same trend. So since we have 24 cores in the 12900K, I decided to run a little bit more ambitiously on one core, four core, eight core, and 16 core. And you realize the trend completely reverses and not really reverses, but in scale data is exactly the same. But in fine markers, just by increasing the number of cores, actually increasing the number of time that you have, even if you have 16 cores. So I, I believe that's a situation whereby the, the, because of how small our serial object is, it doesn't actually benefit from the multi-threading because splitting the track into multi-processes actually make it slower to calculate than actually do it in one or two because the parallelizability is not as strong when the task is very small. So what does this tell us? First of all, parallelization doesn't always make things faster. It might make things slower. And it's important that you are going to run this thing, first of all, in your own computer and see what happens because it will depend on the CPU type, the tracks that you have and the core you have, whether the new one nodes that you have. And there's a lot of factors that could affect the, the situation right here. So uh, what I want all of you to do is actually go back try to run the code, download the code in R, run exactly what I have and then see how it works on your computer. I think that will make it quite fun and if possible, post your CPU uh, CPU model, your RAM number, and then just uh, put, it, put your timing down below. And then we can see a comparison as well as a summary of how different CPU and different configuration would actually affect the, the, the speed of the calculation. I think that'll be a fun experiment to run. So that's all I want to say about the parallelization zero rep and I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye.